on to the dream Hold on, hold on now, now Now, how many of you guys remember what it was like on that first, the first day when you got that acceptance letter? When you looked at it, you were like, oh my God! I can't believe it! Oh, oh, oh! Some of y'all probably, some of y'all probably started shouting. How many people shouted when they got their acceptance letter? Mm. How many of y'all felt like y'all 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 praying in tongues? You guys supposed to have to But I know the feeling. I know it's like. I know the excitement. I know I know and you know why you were so excited? You weren't excited because you got accepted. You were excited because 12 years of hard work finally paid off. It finally paid off. But you went to all these classes, whatever your school was, you had to do the study, you had to do the homework. Then, God forbid, you had to get ready for senior prom. Oh my gosh. Who goes to see your prom? I mean, oh goodness. I mean, the, the mayhem, the dress, the, the getting your hair done, fellas getting your hair cut, buying, buying your tux, you know, women buying all the dresses. And the funny thing is, some of y'all got that dress and spent all that money on that dress and you wear it, you'll never wear it again. Because now it's just a memory. You spent good money to make a memory. But you felt like it was worth it and you were rewarding yourself because you made it to your senior year in high school and you're ready to go off and go to school. Now, the problem with high school is that a lot of teenagers don't understand that it's trying to prepare them for now. How many of you say, if I knew then what I know now, I would have did it a little bit different? That's just about everybody. And it's because you don't really understand what's happening around you as you get into the thick of things. A lot of times when you were in high school, when you were that, that, that teenager, you felt like you knew everything that was going on, didn't you? You felt like, I know. No, no, mom, look, I gotta go to this party, because if I don't go to this party, then Mom, you just don't understand. <laughs> the world is going to end. You got to sit. You felt like the world was going to end. You know what I'm saying? How many of y'all remember those days? And the reason I want you to reflect back on those days is because even at those times when you got into high school, the only reason you were one of those students that were even able to make it into a university like Florida is because you still found a way to apply yourself. You still found a way to push. You didn't barely make it into Florida. University of Florida has a very stringent acceptance policy. You guys are the ones that are projected. If you read the statistics about the University of Florida, you're projected to come out and get some of the best jobs that are available in the nation because you go to a top 10 university in the United States of America. There are people that are overseas that are trying to get to where you are right now. They're trying to sit in the same seats that you're sitting in right now. Now, if you're not a student of the University of Florida, but you do live in Gainesville, Florida, and you go to Santa Fe, Santa Fe is in the top 10 uh, junior colleges in the nation. So you have two top 10 schools right here in the city of Gainesville. I almost said the country of Gainesville. Because <laughs> I feel like, you know, I don't know, I feel like we're on our own little island somewhere. But we're here. You made it here. And the funny thing about it is you're not here on accident, you're supposed to be here. Some of you guys may have come in tonight like, oh my gosh, I'm going to do another OES yes thing. I missed the first week of school and what they want me to do. Oh, they give them free food? Cool, I'm down. <laughs> I'll stick around for some free food. And then you start seeing all the other stuff that was going on, and they talk to you about obesity. Some of y'all want to go home and go do push-ups as soon as you leave here tonight. <laughs> and that's quite all right. I'll expect something like that, and just stay on it. You did what it took to get here. You were supposed to be here. When I think of numbers like 30,000, and then only 6,500 being accepted, I had the opportunity to speak with the AIM program this summer. And there were 3,000 or 300 freshmen that were there. So I was like, so you guys are the elite group of freshmen that were selected to come to school a whole semester early in the summertime? Do you realize, and I didn't get to say this to them because I didn't really find out all the statistics until after I got done talking to them, but I'm sitting there like, oh my gosh, you're in the top 1%. You are in the top 1%. 30,000 people when you're here, that's 1% of the people that could have been coming to the school. The reason I want to point out the importance of why you're here and how you got here is because sometimes we get here, we get complacent, and we forget all about it. So I wanted to take you back to that point so that you can have a point of reference to where you started. That was where you started. It wasn't the end, and this is definitely the beginning to attract what you were going to love, what you were going to enjoy. But it all depends on the choices that you make. You have a reputation that you're building right now. There are some of you that are here, and this is your first year here, and there are people that are back home in your towns and your cities at your old high schools that are looking up to you because you made it to the University of Florida. 
And in the state of Florida, to know that you're a Gator, that's something big, that's prestigious in the minds of people. I don't care what school they talk about they want to go to. They can be at Miami, they can be at, um, they can be, what's that school you were talking about again? <laughs> they wear these colors. Come on, you look so salty, man. <laughs> they can be from Florida State, but no matter what, the thing that I found is that people honor and they respect those people that go to those schools. Now, my question is, now that you're here, what are you going to do with it? So, everybody say five W's. Five W's. What do you think my five W's are? Five W's. Oh, y'all paid attention to school. <laughs> Woo! Do yourself a hand, do yourself a hand. Yeah. Everybody else like that. Do I need to really give myself a hand? No, give yourselves a hand. Yeah. Congratulations. So, I'm going to have Mr. Harold. We're going to go through all the W's. When you see the W, I want you to say it, okay? Ooh. Hold on, hold on. Turn it black real quick. Oh, that's tight. Okay, now do it again. Ooh. Bunch of hours. What? Uh huh. When? Uh huh. Where? Uh huh. Why? Okay, good. We're going to finish off with the why. So go back all the way to the who. So, who? Everybody say who. Who? Who stands for who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Who were you in high school? Were you the geek? Were you the popular person? Were you that person that just had an attitude? Were you that person that was focused? Were you that person that was driven? Did you have drive? Did you have desire? You must have had some of that because you made it this far. Are you here because your parents pushed you here, or are you here because you really wanted to be here? No matter what happened, you got here. Isn't that crazy? So everybody say, who? Who are you? Whose are you? Who were you? Because I wasn't always, see the thing is, I've always been who I am today, but I wasn't always acting like the person that I am today. I made a lot of bad choices in the past. I did a lot of dumb things in the past. But then I realized my who. I figured out who I was. I'm a leader. If you're a leader, say I'm a leader. I'm a leader. Oh good, I'm in a room full of leaders. I'm a winner. If you're a winner, say I'm a winner. I'm a winner. Oh good, I'm in a room full of winners. We win. We can't lose. There's nothing that you can do to lose because it's already scripted out. It's like running a race. And you've already won before you ran the race. It's like playing a video game, but you put the cheat code in so where nobody else can beat you, so you're already winning the video game. It's like going to the gym to work out and you're already in shape. <laughs> I'm saying it's like it's like going to here you go. It's like showing up at Chick-fil-A and you're already full. <laughs> Think about it. It's already done for you. And that should help you identify what your who is. The problem with getting to your who is you have to get past what that thing is called the lid that's on the top of your potential. Every single individual in this room has potential. You have potential. Some of your potential is untapped. Some of your potential is jarred up, bottled up. It would be horrible. Just, just think about this. What if I'm dying of starvation? And I got a refrigerator, refrigerator right here full of food. And all I gotta do is open the refrigerator and I can eat whatever I want. But I'm over here, I'm double over, and I'm dying of starvation. <laughs> Some of y'all looking at me like, man, go eat the food. <laughs> Matter of fact, here's another one. Y'all ever seen the Titanic? Yeah. Okay. So you got this scene in the Titanic, right? They get into the water and Rose gets up on the door and Jack is holding on to Rose's hand and it's like, Jack, I won't let go. Don't you see that, Rose? <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, right? Okay, so he's shivering, he's shaking. How many people say, pull him up on the board with me? Okay, so y'all with me. Now think about it, think about it. All he had to do, they could have bounced their weight out. He could have got, they would have been much warmer on that door together than she was on the door by herself. Because when she needed to yell for help, she was having a hard time. But let's take that, let's take us and make us Jack. Jack was a man in that movie that had all kinds of potential. He was a dreamer, he was a visionary. He was one of those people that he wanted everything and he promised everything. It was like, Rose, if you can dream it, I'll give it to you. Matter of fact, when he got to a point and he realized that he couldn't go on, he was like, no, you're gonna do this and you're gonna do that. 
I submit that everybody in this room has that ability. Everybody in this room has that potential. Everybody in this room is that person. But the problem is, what Jack didn't do is he didn't allow himself to get onto the board so he could live that life out with her. And he sunk to the bottom of the ocean, him and all his potential. So we never know what Jack's going to do. Is that going to be you? Tell it is, I'm all swear now. I had the tiger, I got the stare now. Carry on.